an outstanding job. I must also commend my friend Mithika. Mithika is Kenyan, but I'm not responsible for his short speech. <laughs> in any case, I hope all of you have enjoyed your stay in our country, and I'm delighted to hear that your discussions have been encouraging and productive, which bodes well for our progress, prosperity, and the future of both the people of Kenya and all of us as global citizens. It is a privilege to participate in the conference on shaping a future of global and sustainable progress. The role of civil society organizations in shaping our future is crucial, and I commend the organizers for providing a platform for such vital conversations and discussions. Embracing democratic values such as inclusivity, accountability, and transparency is essential for any meaningful progress. Ladies and gentlemen, we convene at a pivotal moment. Our world confronts challenges ranging from climate change, inequality, and global health crisis to armed conflict and technological disruptions. These issues impede our pursuit of the 2030 agenda. Yet, we also stand before a significant opportunity which coupled with advancement in technology and knowledge could lead us to a more prosperous future befitting all of us. Global challenges necessitate global responses. In an interconnected world, no nation can address these challenges in isolation and expect to succeed. The rise of networked, the rise of networked social movements has elevated them from grassroots gatherings to influential forces that shape policy, drive change, and keep governments in check. <laughs> governments operate under intense pressures to deliver immediate results while pursuing sustainable development, which demands long-term integrated strategies. We recognize the non-state sector as vital for inclusive growth and sustainable development. Your role in championing policies that address the special needs of multiple and diverse constituencies, fostering change, ensuring social justice, advocating for protection of minorities, transparency and accountability is integral to any meaningful development. Your advocacy your advocacy is crucial in defining our policies and actions to deliver sustainable development. This fact is now clearer than ever as Kenya pursues a bottom-up economic transformation agenda to deliver ample opportunities, create jobs, and provide critical social services aiming to significantly reduce poverty and enhance employment in the next 10 to 15 years. Better, a national transformation plan was developed through an extensive inclusive process involving actors from diverse agencies, interest groups, organizations, and sectors across the country from the grassroots up. This method of conceptualizing and developing our manifesto and developing agenda proved to be most effective in solving problems, meeting people's needs, and implementing growth strategies. Consequently, our plan represents a revolutionary ap approach to national development, focusing on ambitious targets and implementing bottom-up transformation strategies. These strategies prioritize expanding and aligning opportunities with the aspirations of micro, small, and medium enterprises, small-scale rural farmers, and millions of other Kenyans in the informal sector. Our development agenda is inclusive with a special focus on those at the bottom of the economic pyramid. Addressing the causes of exclusion and marginalization as fundamental drivers of poverty and inequality has become a priority. Under BETA, we understand development to be the inclusive and collective pursuit 
of diverse goods across numerous sectors and not a special and exclusive project of the executive or the public sector defined by narrow objectives or narrow interests. It is evident that for development to fulfill its purpose, it must be pursued by an all of society coalition from the bottom up and its impact must be felt by citizens from all walks of life. I, I want to repeat this because it's important. I want to repeat this, that development cannot be the preserve or the exclusive preserve of the executive or those who monopolize power. For it to be meaningful, it must be an all-of-society coalition bringing politicians, those in government, those in the opposition, civil society, non-governmental organizations, into one space that then can figure out what is the future that befits all of us. That is why our commitment to establishing a platform of engagement, bringing together micro, small, and medium enterprise and large business owners, civil society organizations, faith-based groups, youth, women, and others to address the nation's cohesion and inequality challenges is very central. Further, in recognition of the indispensable capacity of civil society sector in promoting education and awareness, inclusion, participation, and mobilizing collective action, we committed to operationalizing the Public Benefits Organizations Act. I, I made that commitment, and maybe civil society have been wondering what's happening. This act st stuck in limbo for over a decade, yet it aims to expand the space for government and non-governmental organization partnership and collaboration. I am proud to announce to you that we have every intention of living up to our commitment. That is why yesterday, I know when I was sitting here with Carol, she was trying to persuade me. <laughs> she didn't know that uh, it is not necessary to wink to a man who is already coming for your date. <laughs> that is why yesterday we executed the legal instruments to give the BPO Act effect as law in Kenya. Let, let me say this, that um, there's been a debate in Kenya as to what do we do with our public um, uh, uh, benefit organizations in Kenya, otherwise called non-governmental organizations. And there's been a robust and big debate as to what parameters do we apply. I see and I am persuaded that civil society has a real chance of making a contribution to making our country better. We may not, we may not necessarily agree, but that is the beauty of having diverse opinions. We end up with a better result if we have, if we harness all the viewpoints and finally come to a conclusion when we have considered all our diverse ideas, suggestions, and recommendations. The new BPO Act that was enacted almost 15 years ago but we operationalized it yesterday. So, Carol, what you asked me to do, I already did. <laughs> so, um, this framework, you know, the NGO Act 
put through our civil society a very chaotic mechanism where they had almost eight pieces of legislation that governed their operation. We have now consolidated the operations of civil society into one predictable legal regime. They now can understand how registration will happen, how they can conduct their business. Secondly, and most importantly, 